Picture this, a flickering screen, the soft glow casting a warm ambience across the room. You settle into the cozy embrace of your favorite armchair, a bowl of popcorn within reach, and a sense of anticipation hanging in the air. As you hit play, the television comes to life, and there it is on 1,962 euros s beloved TV series, McHale's Navy. It's a show that carries you back in time, a journey to an era where laughter echoed through living rooms, bridging generations with its timeless humor. The misadventures of the ragtag crew of PT-73 led by the irrepressible Lieutenant Commander Quentin McHale become a portal to a simpler world, where camaraderie and comedic chaos reign supreme. Do you remember that first chuckle that escaped your lips as McHale and his motley crew charmed their way into your heart? Perhaps it was the zany antics of Ensign Parker or the witty banter that unfolded against the backdrop of the Pacific Theater during World War II. As the episodes unfolded, you found yourself immersed in a world where laughter served as a potent remedy, even in the midst of wartime challenges. The show, with its quirky characters and endearing escapades, became more than just a television series. At EU Writ became a cherished memory etched into the tapestry of your entertainment journey. And now, as you reflect on those moments, you're invited to delve into some intriguing tidbits about the show that may just surprise you. Did you know that the show was inspired by creator Edward Montagna's own experiences in the Navy during World War II? Or that the iconic PT-73 boat used in the series was meticulously recreated to bring McHale's nautical escapades to life? These fascinating details add layers of depth to the show's charm, reminding us that even amidst the laughter, there's a rich history waiting to be explored. So, sit back, relax, and let's embark on a journey through the captivating world of McHale's Navy. As we unravel the tapestry of facts and anecdotes woven into the fabric of this classic show, you'll find yourself falling in love with the characters and stories all over again. It's a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and the way it can touch our lives in unexpected ways. And so, without further ado, let's dive into the heartwarming and humorous world of McHale's Navy, where every episode is a voyage worth savoring. Get ready to relive the moments, uncover new insights, and perhaps even share a hearty chuckle or two. Oy vey, echoed throughout the Pacific in the 1962 TV series McHale's Navy, but it was the Japanese phrase of EUR it was Yiddish. Fuji Kobayashi, the character known for his exclamations, popularized the expression, meaning oh whoa, in a surprising twist, even Lieutenant CMDR. Quentin McHale chimed in, saying, It's just like Fuji would say if he was here, and the crew joined in unison, exclaiming, Oy vey. This quirky linguistic phenomenon added a touch of unexpected humor to the show's nautical misadventures, reminding us that the unlikeliest phrases can become part of a TV legacy. Unlikely transfers and explosive showdowns, McHale's Navy unveiled in a surprising twist during the final season of the beloved 1962 TV series McHale's Navy, Lieutenant CMDR. Quentin McHale and his misfit crew found themselves yanked from the familiar waters of the Pacific Theater to the uncharted territories of the European Theater. This narrative maneuver, though captivating, raised eyebrows among historians for its departure from reality. Set against the backdrop of World War II, the sitcom, renowned for its humor and camaraderie, took an unexpected turn during its sixth season. The audience was presented with the astonishing sight of McHale and his crew being reassigned across oceans, leaving behind the Pacific's palm-fringed isles for the battlefields of Europe. Yet, military historians are quick to point out that such transfers were exceedingly rare, if not outright implausible, given the logistics and strategic considerations of wartime deployments. Moreover, the show's depiction of naval combat with Japanese submarines, an essential element of its plot, played out in an almost cinematic fashion. When McHale's crew engaged a Japanese sub, a predictable spectacle ensued. The enemy vessel would either dramatically explode upon being struck by a torpedo, or, equally dramatically, rise to the surface before meeting its fiery demise from a well-placed depth charge. These thrilling scenarios, while catnip for viewers, ventured into the realm of artistic license rather than historical accuracy. As the sitcom's popularity soared, it underwent shifts that both captivated and bewildered its dedicated fan base. From a lone opening credit appearance by Ernest Borgnine during its initial season to the inclusion of Tim Conway and Joe Flynn in subsequent seasons, the show transformed alongside the dynamic ensemble that brought its characters to life. 
Though the series might have taken liberties with military realism, its enduring appeal cannot be denied. The exploits of Lieutenant CMDR. Quentin McHale and his motley crew continue to entertain generations, even if their on-screen adventures diverged from the actual wartime norms. And in the world of television, where fiction dances with history, McHale's Navy remains a cherished emblem of light-hearted storytelling in the midst of a tumultuous era. Ernest Borgnine, renowned for his iconic role in the 1962 TV series McHale's Navy, carried a deep connection to naval life long before he donned the sailor's uniform on screen. Serving in the U.S. Navy during World War II, Borgnine was a gunner's mate on the anti-submarine vessel U.S.S. Sylph off the Atlantic coast. A commitment of 10 years, from 1935 through the war's end, defined his dedication to maritime service. In 2004, the U.S. Navy paid homage to Borgnine's unwavering support by conferring upon him the title of Honorary Chief Petty Officer. This distinction marked the culmination of a career that intertwined Hollywood with the naval domain. The resonance of his real-world naval experiences undoubtedly imbued his portrayal of the bumbling yet endearing Lieutenant Commander Quentin McHale with authenticity. The series itself, McHale's Navy, often wove historical threads into its comedic fabric. An intriguing instance emerged when a character referred to an unnamed commander of torpedo boat PT-109 the very vessel commanded by John F. Kennedy during World War II. This subtle nod bridged fiction with history, intertwining the show's world with the broader tapestry of the wartime past. Ernest Borgnine's dual identity as a war veteran and a beloved actor infused McHale's Navy with a layer of genuine maritime essence. His portrayal, rooted in personal experience, and the show's integration of historical references forged a unique connection between the entertainment realm and the naval annals. In the 1962 TV series McHale's Navy, a standout character emerged in the form of the crooked mayor of Voltafiore, Mario Lugato. Portrayed by the talented Jay Novello, Lugato was a constant thorn in the side of the series' protagonist, Captain Wallace B. Binghamton. Lugato's relentless pursuit of financial gain from the captain added a layer of comedic tension to the show's dynamic. As the bumbling and often exasperated Binghamton navigated the challenges of wartime service, Lugato's schemes to extract money from him became a recurring motif. Jay Novello's portrayal of the cunning mayor added depth to the series' ensemble cast, and further highlighted the clash between military authority and the local inhabitants of the fictional Voltafiore. While McHale's Navy is often remembered for its humor and camaraderie, the character of Mario Lugato, masterfully brought to life by Jay Novello, offered a memorable glimpse into the world beyond the military base. The character's presence underscored the series' ability to weave complex relationships and situational comedy into its wartime backdrop. Through Lugato's antics, viewers were treated to a different dimension of storytelling within the framework of this beloved show. In the grand tapestry of McHale's Navy, Mario Lugato remains a testament to the creativity and diversity of characters that populated the series. Jay Novello's portrayal of the Crooked Mayor remains a standout element that contributed to the enduring legacy of this iconic television show. So, next time you find yourself revisiting the comedic exploits of the crew from PT-73, remember the name Mario Lugato, the cunning mayor who added an extra layer of laughter to McHale's Navy, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of classic television. Chagrin Falls Connection, when fiction mirrors reality in McHale's Navy in the charmingly chaotic world of the 1962 TV series McHale's Navy. Fictional lives often intertwined with reality in unexpected ways. One such example lies in the character ends. Charles Parker, portrayed by the talented actor Tim Conway. Parker's frequent mention of hailing from Chagrin Falls, Ohio, wasn't just a throwaway detail at EUR, it was a nod to Conway's own upbringing. Chagrin Falls, a picturesque town known for its waterfalls and serene landscapes, found itself etched into the show's narrative through Conway's portrayal of the bumbling an endearing ensign. Much like Parker, Conway had his roots firmly planted in Chagrin Falls. The convergence of character and actor birthed a unique connection that lent an authentic touch to the show's quirky charm. The series, set in the Pacific Theater during World War II, followed the escapades of Lieutenant CMDR, Quentin McHale, and his ragtag crew. 
Among them was Enns, Charles Parker, who, with every mention of his hometown, unwittingly brought a piece of Conway's own past into the show's fabric. This subtle blending of fact and fiction added depth to Parker's character, and a layer of relatability for Conway's fans who hailed from Chagrin Falls. Conway's portrayal of Parker was marked by his comedic genius, his impeccable timing, and his ability to seamlessly meld into the show's zany universe. The Chagrin Falls connection was just one of the many ways Conway's influence enriched McHale's Navy. While the show's premise revolved around the humorous misadventures of naval personnel, it's these personal touches at EUR like the shared origin of Parker and Conway at EUR that elevated the series beyond the realm of mere comedy. It's a testament to the show's creators and actors that even amidst the fictional chaos of war, they managed to infuse a slice of reality, creating a bridge between the world on screen and the lives of those who brought it to life. So, as viewers chuckled it ends. Charles Parker's mention of Chagrin Falls, Ohio, they unknowingly shared a knowing smile with Tim Conway, a man whose roots ran as deep as the show's laughter. As the curtain falls on this voyage through the nostalgic waters of the 1962 TV series McHale's Navy, I invite you to pause and let the echoes of laughter and camaraderie reverberate within your memories. Much more than a mere show, it's a time capsule that carries us back to an era of innocence, where the misadventures of the crew of PT-73 became our cherished companions. As you tread the sands of memory, allow yourself to be swept away by the charm of McHale's cunning plans and the delightful chaos that ensued. Recall those moments when the crew's zany schemes collided with their heartwarming friendships, leaving us all with a medley of smiles and sighs. Now, I urge you to reflect on your own personal connection with this timeless gem. What memories does it conjure? What emotions does it stir? Perhaps it's a shared laughter with family on a cozy evening, or a solitary chuckle during a lazy afternoon. Maybe it's a reminder of simpler times, a gateway to relive the past or introduce the magic to a new generation. In this age of rapid change, McHale's Navy remains an anchor, reminding us of the enduring power of connection, humor, and the bonds that tie us together. So, I extend an open invitation to you, dear reader, viewer, to share your treasured memories and thoughts about this beloved series. Your stories enrich the tapestry of its legacy, weaving together the experiences that make it special to each of us. Thank you for taking this delightful journey down memory lane, for allowing the nostalgia to wash over you once more. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. Until we gather around the campfire of memories once again, remember, it's the laughter that keeps us afloat on the sea of time.